Hi everyone, I'm Donald Kenning, and uh, you're at my house here in the suburbs of Kennewick, Washington. And I would like to take you around and show you everything that's here and all the exciting uh, uh, gardening type of things that I'm doing here. Okay? okay. So what do we got? Okay, so what, I, what I've done over the years is I've done, um, since the Tri-Cities gets about seven to nine inches of rain a year, I put into the ground a storage media, and that storage media is rotting wood, okay? Um, you don't need to go out and buy stuff. I get wood from Craigslist or by cutting different trees that I have on my property or cutting rose bushes or whatever. Just the woody organic material can be bound up and buried into the ground, and that becomes a haven for water, a water storage medium right so what I did was over here which is now disappeared um, you see that lot that little stump um, sticking up there that's where I did my first experimental dig and I only went down like a foot and put in some uh, some wood and and then covered it back up and tried to see you know what that was about <laughs> um, so I put a Christmas tree in and a couple of tree branches and stuff and, and, and tried to not water it, but I didn't put a covering on it, okay? And so any plants I put in there, they just dried up and, and died, okay? Then over here, you see the, there are three piles and they look like three wood chip piles, right? Underneath the, the one on the right, it was my uh, hugel pile number two and I made that just ground level and um, I, I put a covering over it eventually and I grew sedums there because I didn't want you know it was an experiment and sedums are pretty hardy and stuff like that so um, <clears throat> we can come on over here and uh, so I actually just did that for a little bit and then, um, then I decided, well, I needed a storage place for all the wood chips that were, that were coming in to my property, right? And I wasn't really growing anything of value here except for the sedums. So I started storing wood chips here, right? But before I did that, I dug a massive hole here, about two feet down, six feet long, and a couple of feet wide filled it up with wood and filled it up over the top like it, it came up about a foot and a half and then I put the dirt back over the top of it and started growing it in it right this is my third hugu culture mound and uh, and it was an okay success um, but then when I started putting wood chips over the top um, it started to retain more water on the inside. But I figure, figure that uh, the storage capacity of this Hubel coaster bed is about, uh, uh, what was it, 10 gallons per foot um, along the way here, right? So when it rains, it stores up the, 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 the water underneath the ground and then um, the wood chips over the top keep the water in or liberate the water in, depending on how saturated it is. You can't see much in here right now. Um, well, some, some Bermuda grass is coming and growing <laughs> in here, right? Um, this is a local cactus. I got this out at West Richland, actually. A uh, person that lives out there was do, uh, doing that. But anyway, when I Put the put all of this together. I just threw seeds in here, just seeds. Uh, no transplanting anything, but I did transplant this little guy in here, and I unsuccessfully had an aloe vera and a prickly pear. But this onion just came up on its own, and um, we have some other things starting here. You never know with this one. Uh, this is still kind of experimental, but I'm trying to 
have water storage underneath with soil and then with wood chips over the top, right? Because this is the Tri-Cities. Uh, we I'd don't rather, get rain. <laughs> I'm trying to stack the deck toward having more and more water, but it's, it's, not, it's not always a success, okay? Then over here is another pile of wood chips. So last spring, early spring, I got uh, one load of wood chips mm -hmm. from the local tree company. And then in the fall, I got one more. So this pile and that pile of wood chips uh, didn't exist until the pile in the fall came. And so these are kind of like my staging piles. But all kinds of stuff is growing in. This is a pile of wood chips. There's no soil here, but there's stuff growing in them. I'm not sure what this is. I think this is whatever tree um, they came from. All these wood chips came from. And there are a lot of them around here. Which is, I think, okay. I'll eventually pull them out and that becomes organic, uh, organic matter that, uh, that will decay and be part of the, the soil anyway. I need, you know, in some ways it doesn't matter what the plant is, as long as you get the live root in the ground and you get the, 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 the soil food web going. And in the Tri-Cities, it's so hard to get that soil food web going, fired up and maintained and stuff. That's why the rotting wood, I think, also helps with that, right? And then um, over here, what I do is uh, I pile up, uh, what you call it, um, organic material um, from the house, um, like uh, like, uh, I when I mow the grass, I only uh, collect the clippings from the edge, and then I mulch everything uh, that I I mow in the middle, right? So so that the sidewalks aren't that uh, messed up, right? Right? Because because I don't like to sweep and stuff, and it really messes up the sidewalks with refuse if I just mulch everything. Right, so I just do one pass around the edge and then keep on going in the, in the middle. So, uh, grass clippings, shredded paper, um, you know, uh, coffee, tea, egg shells, whatever else from, but I don't throw meat, dairy, butter, uh, fog, fat, oil, and grease um, into this. It's just purely vegetative matter. So, uh, in general, that's how that works. Now, I, uh, I waited for this camera to be here. I wanted to figure out what these plants were. They're growing in wood chips. It looks like potatoes. Kind of does. But I never put any potatoes in this. And I can't, for the life of me, imagine potatoes coming in the big truck load right. of wood chips, right? So while we're here, we're gonna just see where this leads. If you wanna bring this in a little bit, I don't know if you can see all this. If this leads down to a potato, oh, look how moist that is. Oh, that will become really great stuff. Like I said, this has only been here, this part has been here for like four or five months. Oh, there's something deep in here. Oh, whoa. Look. There's a little red potato in there. It is. Oh, wow. Look at that. That See is that? really weird. Huh. I, I don't know how that got in there. I'm just going to, well, if that came from there, I don't know. But I'm just going to put that back where I found it. That's a nice little potato bed you got going on there now. <laughs> in wood chips. Yeah. No soil, right? And that's how Paul does it, right? He just puts his seed potato, the best potato from the, the plant, right back into the wood chips, right? These are accidental, right? But they're in wood chips, so you know that they're gonna be nourished somehow, right? Anyway, that's great. That's crazy. I, I had no idea. I've never gotten potatoes in a little wood chips before. That's awesome. Yeah, so. 
great. So what this whole thing is, this was, and when, when I in, inherited this property, inherited, when I bought the property, um, there was a 10, 15 foot wide thing, as long as you see it from, from here to there that was the previous owner's garden. And for a decade, a, a solid decade, I put Roundup on this because I didn't want a garden at all, right? Yeah, I know, Roundup. I've, I've since converted. I have, I use no chemicals on this property anymore, right? But I did then and I feel really bad and I <laughs> killed this place, right? You know, so now I'm bringing back life and it's, it's as Paul mentions, uh, humble beginnings. Right. Um, so this is. Uh, I know I've been at it a couple years here, but uh, what I'm creating here is a fertile soil bed that can go anywhere, even stay here. Right. So this right here is. I know becoming more fertile because the Bermuda grass is coming in. And it's really liking it, but but the Bermuda grass, I can actually pull. Well, that's not a good example, but I can pull <laughs> a little bit more than if it were coming out of the ground, right? Because it's in nice soft wood chips. And so I'm just kind of this is the, the end where I'm just kind of almost making soil, but I have no place for it just yet. But you know how Paul does with his chickens. I don't have any chickens, right? So everything that's refuse is coming into here. And then wood chips are kind of slowly filtering over the top of it. And then that will become eventually stuff that I would spread as covering on other areas. Okay. The only other feature about this, this whole big area that I want to point out here is um, right over here. Okay. So I did a big project with uh, digging this here and digging over here. And you'll see the other dig over there. But I got a lot of rocks, okay? And most people just throw away rocks. But as a lot of people know, um, it's great to have little domiciles for your favorite uh, insect-eating um, animals, like snakes and lizards and all that other stuff. So I got enough rocks in digging in the three projects to have three piles of rocks this size. Um, a shout out to my, my brother-in-law who made this nice little kitty kitty cat. Mm -hmm. It's a, a copper thing and it's really cute and he guards this particular pile of rocks. And uh, so that is a, a habitat for things to, um, you know, all insects and animals are welcome on this property. I don't use any insecticides or any pesticides or anything like that. I don't, I want the birds to come. I want the ants to come. I want the paper wasps to come, right? All are welcome because they come here and work for me instead of against me. And people think that insects, there's no good bug unless it's a dead bug. <laughs> but they all work for you and I'm I'm creating a trying to create a good haven for them because eventually they'll do the work for me. God's little creatures will do the work for me and I can be lazy. So I haven't done much along the back wall here, but I did put wood chips over what was the garden. Right, this is what we decided on for a garden space instead of that big one over there mm -hmm. because we didn't want to do a whole bunch of stuff. And so this is where we applied the seven powder to get rid of the insects and the fertilizer mm -hmm. and all of that other stuff. And um, now I've, I've just kind of, um, we, we still grow stuff in here every once in a while, but it's really hard to keep away the dang Bermuda grass, right? Yeah. And I've dug this up a hundred million times. Okay. Well, maybe seven or eight times. Right. 
just to get that Bermuda grass out. And then I put a little sprinkler in this and it just kind of sprinkles this little area. Um, now, I don't know how this is going to turn out, but last year, uh, since I had so many wood chips, I just spread it over the top of this and we'll see what happens, right? But I'm not going to be using any fertilizers, any insecticides, any on my property anymore, right? And there's some reasons that are different, but uh, but everyone should, should do that anyway because, you know, the soil food web can work for you or against you. And using those chemicals, it will always work against you. Right. Right? Here's my blueberries. Yay. Wood chips all around this too, right? This is the first thing, I think this is the first place I've ever put any wood chips, but of course the it's still early spring, so I'll be getting some of this Bermuda grass out of here and stuff like that. Okay, so now on to the biggest project of them all. Okay, what I, what, oh sorry, sorry about that. So the city of Kennewick, or the Tri-Cities area, has a, a, an ordinance um, about pests, right? And if you have an apple tree, you need to, um, you need to manage your pests. Now people think that that is defined as spraying chemicals on a tree. Managing is spraying death across your tree to kill the coddling moth, which is a big problem around here, right? And professional growers, they have a coddling moth problem and they spray all the time, right? But like I said, I don't want to uh, spray anything but I'm required to manage the pest problem, okay? If I had a fruit tree, and namely an apple tree, which I do. Okay, what I'm walking on now is the thing that I did for this apple tree right here, okay? And um, the management of its pests was me digging this whole area up. I moved 13 cubic yards of dirt um, with a shovel and a wheelbarrow. Right, 13 cubic yards is what you would fit in a in a commercial sized dump truck. Right, or one of those big trucks that give you the wood chips. Those are about 15, 20 mm. cubic yards. I dug around here. Um, about uh, 13 cubic yards. Okay, so to start off, the features of this is when I got this property, I got it, it had these rails. Yeah, these are the railroad ties, right? I put wood chips down and a little bit of chicken manure down so that as the nasty stuff from the rails um, decayed and went into the soil, it would be absorbed by the wood chips and the chicken manure. And there's a study I read about abatement of the chemicals uh, like creosote in, in railroad ties, but by you, the use of chicken or cow manure with wood chips and all that other stuff. So wood chips again, are being used underneath this rail, but not in the same way Paul Gauchi does it, right? Mm. But it's a way of um, preventing the spread of toxic materials. Because if I didn't do that, yeah, it would probably break down, but it would take it would probably take a little bit longer. I don't know what the difference is gonna be. So what did I do here? I dug, like I said, 13 cubic yards, and I'll be walking back towards you from here all the way, all the way around here, right? All the way, all the way around here, all the way back here, up to here, right? Two feet deep and, you know, several feet wide, and then I put in, uh, rotting wood 
birch, pine, whatever, I found people listing uh, on Craigslist, you know, they have firewood or they cut some branches off a tree or whatever, and I just got a, t a lot of wood. Well, about 10 cubic yards worth of wood, rotting wood, plus whatever was on my property, which I bunched up into bunches, so they're, but they're closer together, and it now fills this whole area, okay? So, if you go along here, remember I said over there, Hoogle Culture Pile 3 was about 11 gallons per foot of storage. This is closer to 15 or 20 gallons underneath the soil of, of water storage. Then, you have the soil, and then over the top, wood chips, right? When I got my second uh, load of wood chips that was in the fall, um, all around here, I put about this much wood chips on here. But before I did that, I, I planted some garlic and stuff like that. So, um, so then the spring, I scraped off some of the wood chips so that we only have about this much because plants need to come out and it's hard for them to come out of this right. much wood chips, right? And then I also put in a bunch of seeds and stuff like that. So you can see some of the onion and um, what you call it? Onion and... Looks like potato there too. Potatoes. Um, I did actually, here, I actually did put some potatoes in and I put in all kinds of seed. It's a seed bank. So as I was putting the dirt on here, I was also broadcasting just a bunch of seeds, cucumbers and, and onions and whatever else and, and some cloves of garlic, um, you know, the, whatever you call those things. And you can see almost, you see that onion and that onion, it kind of forms a row here. Right. And then there's another row of some other stuff coming up. It's early spring, so it's kind of hard to tell. But this, your camera angle probably isn't capturing it, but here's the main ground. And it's above the ground by about a foot and a half. Okay. Yeah. That's the top all the way around of this thing. So two feet down from this level is where, you know, it go up, comes up. So it's about three feet worth of storage, right? So it's about 15 gallons per foot. Um, but in the wide parts, it's probably more like 20 gallons of storage water underneath the ground. And then the wood chips keep it in you know, and moderate and stuff like that. So as these things are growing up, see, I, I kind of scrape the wood chips away almost to bare soil. And then as things are coming up, um, I'm just kind of side dressing them. I didn't scrape away all the wood chips. So this is pretty thick here, wood chips. But as stuff comes up, I'll just side dress them, right? And as they get bigger and bigger, more side dressing. And hopefully, see these are fingers that are crossed. <laughs> I won't have to water my garden in the Tri-Cities. That'd be awesome. Okay, let me say that again. Maybe, cross my fingers, I won't have to water my garden in the Tri-Cities, which only gets about seven inches of rain. And we normally get Oh, like three or four weeks of 100 degree plus weather, Easy. right? Easy, you know. So, <coughs> up here, I'm going to try to step past that. Up here is more of this stuff. I don't know what it is. It's the tree uh, that this all came from. This is, some people might call that a downfall of having wood chips is things growing in them but I just view it as as a starter um, for the soil food web okay if these things can survive that means yep uh, the the uh, little fungus the little bacteria the little 
microarthropods, the, the whole suit, the whole soil food web is starting to come out of the out of the um, area where this is this is growing because you can't do that without the symbiotic relationship between the plant root giving out its exudates, the sugars, and the things that want that ex the exudates, the soil food web, to eat it up and to eat each other and then to just grow on out. So this actually is an advantage, not a detraction, especially in the Tri-Cities. You get some organic, more organic material going on, and I'm gonna wait for this to grow up a little bit more before I really start to pull any of it away. Because, you know, it's in wood chips. It'll come up easily, yep. you know? And other people that do the wood chip thing um, also think that there's another disadvantage, and that is dog vomit. <laughs> okay, dog vomit, uh, it's a fungus, it's actually a slime mold, and it doesn't hurt the plants, right? but it helps the breakdown of the wood chips, right? So when you see that, you know, people think it's a disadvantage like they saw with little things growing in them. But that just means that there's some more stuff going on, right? There's nothing wrong, and I think some of your viewers actually have some dog vomit slime mold that develops on the top of their stuff. It's nothing to worry about. It's just people think it's gross, you know. And so we have we have blossoms now, right? My tree wasn't really blossoming and stuff. And I've watched the nubs, um, that nubs uh, videos on uh, Paul doing his pruning and stuff like that. Not only the 2017 one, but the 2016 one. Uh, in the January time frame, I think it was. Um, yep. Anyway, uh, I watched them, but it still, my tree was a lot taller, right? And Looks you see, like now I'm down here, but it's still tall. It's just, I built up this whole structure on top of it. And around the tree, I have about a foot, a whole foot of wood chips all the way around, right? Why? Because this is this, this and the lilac tree is kind of a center point for creation of a massive soil food web. These two, these two trees need to be guarded at all time. So this, the wood chips create a buffer, but also a, a very fertile ground for the soil food web. And the tree also provides a live root. If I'm growing annuals, it's not a live root throughout the whole year. This gives me my live root throughout the whole year, right? This keeps the soil food web, or should hopefully, keep the soil food web going, right? Um, so, how am I managing my coddling moth problem? That's, I guess, what your next question is. What features did I install here that would actually prevent coddling moth from uh, propagating throughout this part of the suburbs of, of the Tri-Cities. Well, the thing is, with insects and stuff like that, insects are kind of tasty to birds, lizards, snakes, all that other stuff. So, like I said over here, um, I got from digging a whole bunch of stuff, piles of rocks. And as you can see over there, another there is another pile of rocks already ready for nice little creatures to come live and eat insects and all that other stuff, right? That's feature number one. Feature number two, I'm growing some garlic around the tree, right? Garlic sometimes confuses a bug or keeps a bug away or whatever. And I'll be growing some other, um, what you call it? Uh, uh, Repellent? Um, uh, herbs mm. that uh, confuse bugs and stuff like that, right? The other th uh, feature number three is I want to try to get a few flowers and stuff planted 
edible flowers like uh, what nasturtiums or something like that and just other flowers to bring in the bees bring in the birds bring in the wasps right birds think that that insects are delicious to eat and wasps like some insects to lay their eggs in and stuff like that right so it's great and stuff and then I might put little tents on the branches of this uh, at the beginning that will catch uh, insects because the codling moth they walk up the trunk of the tree I believe come out onto the branch and wherever they see an apple they uh, no no the moth lands on an apple right and then they try they put an egg on the top on it and then it comes into the apple right and then you have a bad apple okay so as Paul points out I want to try to make this tree as healthy as I can make it because on his property when an insect bites into any fruit on his property um, it drowns because of the you know the water content the water content right now even though on this guy when I dug all the way around here I did a couple of a cut a, a couple of roots I thought that was okay because I'm putting back in more structure, more, more, and, and the soils around here in the Tri-Cities aren't that great for growing anything without dumping a bunch of water in it and stuff like that. Here I'm trying to create a water storage medium plus a fungally based medium to help with the exchange of the exudates of the, the roots here with the soil food web. So putting that, all the rotting wood in, is also a, a kind of a short circuit to, to creating a, a, a massive soil food web. And then this foot of wood chips over the top helps keep it underground and healthy and insulated in the winter and insulated in the summer and all that neat stuff. So the the, the last feature that I was saying to manage the insect problem is the best feature, which is create the healthiest tree that you can that will um, fight off its own insect infestation and create the juiciest fruit that you can possibly get and also <laughs> cut it down so I can, because it was like way high, so now I can I can grab the stuff and I'll probably be trimming it a little more better seeing Paul's stuff, but I kind of use the chainsaw. I know yeah. he likes the <laughs> Sabota saw. Uh, the samurai saw? Samurai saw. Yeah. Um, but you know, it was really thick stuff here. Yeah. So uh, so I, I, just to get the, the main stuff down, uh, I will uh, I use the chainsaw and stuff bad me but I'll probably get one of those samurai saws he pointed out something that was very interesting on the latest one the one in January of 2017 he actually cut a thing and had people feel it mm -hmm. right and that looked like that the way it it cuts and almost cauterizes at the same time you know so that you, you won't have a major injury Right of the tree at that particular part where he cut right. That's that's great stuff. But he's an arborist, and I'm just a he's physicist, been doing it for so, years. Yeah. <laughs> so he knows what he's doing, you know. So yeah, there's a lot of branches now. Um, in the next winter, I'll be doing his method of, you know, trying to get in and around and cut the stuff that's going up and down and leave the stuff that's going, you know, all that stuff. Yep. You can see links to the it into the description, <laughs> you know. You're making a lot of work for me now. <laughs> you could edit this part out. <laughs> so, yeah, that's it. So, uh, a rock pile. Planting garlic. Uh, planting different herbs that confuse birds and bees. Um, making this a haven for things that will eat the 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 bad bugs and making this tree as healthy as I can possibly make it you know 
and the wood chips help with almost all of those, right? To create an environment here. As a matter of fact, I'm thinking about like maybe putting a bird bath here mm -hmm. between the two trees. And that way the birds come get a drink and they look around. Hey, there's a bug there. Oh, that's a coddling moth. I love those. Oh. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not going to get rid of all of them. But I'm managing, Mr. Code Enforcer, I'm managing the uh, uh, insect problem. Now, if Mr. Code Enforcer came in, which I actually saw one of them when I was pulling up. <laughs> um, if he came in and he said, what are you doing to manage it? And you're like, hey, I'm spraying chemicals on here to kill them all off. And he'd and be he'd like, go. cool, happy, good times. If he came here right now and said, what are you doing to manage this? And he told him all the things you just told us, would he be like double thumbs up and that's cool? Or okay. would he... The first thing I would do when he asked that, I would remind him that the language of the ordinance is to manage your the coddling mo or the insects around a fruit tree okay and so that is a uh, it's a human intervention kind of a thing right and so I say okay if I if I provide you evidence with me actually uh, on purpose doing things that would remove the coddling moth from this tree would that satisfy you right of course that is management right of the insect problem then i would point out the rock pile and the garlic and the uh attempt to create the best soil food web for this tree that i could possibly make right and um tell them that i'm not not spraying okay no diazinon no none of that other stuff right and then invite him to look for bugs on the tree if he really wants to spend that time and i think with several people watching this video i'm opening myself up to <laughs> one of those code enforcers to come around and challenge my management okay i say bring it on because this is all this is all like documented i can produce i can go on the internet you know something that's free to all including code enforcers <laughs> and find the evidence reports and stuff like that where people are planting stuff around their trees thousands of them are planting garlic around their trees to keep the bugs away right and that's just one thing people are doing to manage their bugs and for some places that's enough i'm doing more than that heck i spent the whole summer digging this part right here <laughs> getting these rails moved away from the root system uh, you know to make this tree healthier right that's the other part of making the food web as robust as it can be is getting the poisoning elements away and trying to encourage the uh, the, the stuff that's actually going to help it right now since you've been using this management technique have you had any pests on any of the moths or anything on your tree? Um, before, okay, before I, I, I believe there was, there was lots of insects. If there were apples, they were not, um, they had insects in them. I, I don't know if they were cuddling moths or not. It was the summer of last year that I did this. So I cut everything off of this tree and stuff. So I had no apples last year. I was still making this by the end of the summer. So this this season this is the first is year. It's going to be the first year of the the management, the full-on management without insecticides or pesticides of this tree. And the thing is, I sprayed it before. And it's a hassle, right? And I come in, I feel so dirty. I put, I take all my clothes off, put it into the washing machine immediately, and take a uh, shower right away. And even then, I will have inhaled a bunch of crap. Here, all I'm going to inhale is the perfume of, of nice flowers and uh, garlic cloves. And I like garlic. If you guys like garlic, right? Um, and I'm not going to be inhaling all the stuff that's going on underneath the ground. 
which is the more important part, is that soil food web is now recovering. I've removed the poisons, I've created a, an environment for the roots and the whole ground around here to absorb water, to, to create a great, a great environment for roots to grow. And that's, that environment is going to also be kicked off by the plants that will grow along in here, right? Um, and if you can see right here, there's a stump. This stump was the very first thing that grew in here last year. I planted a few, uh, well, I put in here a, a seed bank, you know, a whole bunch of seeds. Among them were sunflowers, right? And so I had a sunflower grow up to <laughs> about here, right? And a couple more over there. But uh, I left the, the whole thing, in, uh, I cut the top off, but I left the stock in here all winter long, right? Hopefully, hoping that there's still something in the root, not live, but still to keep the uh, soil food web its beginnings, uh, you know, its, its stuff. Because if you starve a soil food web, or if you starve any organism, it dies. And the soil food web is an organism. It's an organism that will save the world as people say it. Uh, I'm not going to get on that soapbox right now, but what I'm trying to do is trying to get a 24-7, 365 soil, healthy soil food web. And that means having a live root in the ground throughout the whole year. So I, I did not cut this out. I'm leaving it in as a monument mm -hmm. to my first success in the fourth, the fourth Google bed that I grew, uh, that I created. This is a pine tree, a western white pine, or, or something like that. Well, it comes over onto my property, but you can see the trunk is over on the neighbor's, on the other side of the fence. Okay, so anything that comes onto my property is mine, right? I bought and paid for this property. Mm -hmm. So anything that falls here, if a bird poops here, it's my property, right? If a needle falls onto the ground, it's my property, right? Now, um, uh, pine trees versus other kinds of trees are allopathic, right? So in other words, they put down needles around it to try to prevent uh, weeds growing up because they don't want as much competition for the, the stuff in the ground as they, they want to be nourished, right? Mm. And they try to, you know, they you've seen it everywhere. Pine trees put down their needles and and everything dies around them. Well, it's, it's uh, anyway. Um, so what I do is back there behind my shed, it's weed free. There's nothing growing back there, but I have a nice stock of pine needles, right? So in places around my house, that I don't want to grow anything. People put rocks, but eventually that caught, that catches the dirt mm -hmm. that flies in the air. And pretty soon over the years, you have a medium to grow stuff. Right. I grab the pine needles off the trees. Well, not, I don't grab them. Right. I rake them up and then I put them around my house where I don't want something to grow, right? And they're, the pine needles are, mostly allopathic um, they do a better job than than wood chips in general of keeping the weeds away right in general um, and so you can see the tree is also on the neighbor's property too the branches well I, I have them uh, when they rake up they don't want the needles around I I, I think it's a gift right. myself but they don't want the needles around. I say, okay, when you rake them up, throw them over the fence. And so now I have piles on mm -hmm. over here of needles that the fence, that the neighbors so kindly contributed to me. And I thank them so much for helping my property grow in biodiversity and also 
landscaping, mm -hmm. right? With the raw materials free, just right on my property. Mm -hmm. And I'm not growing the tree, right? I mean, here we have uh, Western white pine, I'm sorry, uh, Western red cedar. And I just love Western red cedar. Or this could be Eastern red cedar. This is a scaly leaf one and uh, usually I use it as a, what I call loggers cologne, so I squish it up and, <laughs> you know. But it's really great stuff. This, it also contains insecticides and stuff like that. People put this stuff down to, to keep the insects away, you know. Um, people use solid cedar in their closets to keep the moths away and stuff like that. And it's coming across my fence. What a gift. It is a gift. People think it's a nuisance, but I think it's, it's a gift, you know. And so, sometimes when they trim their trees and stuff, I'm more than happy to take it. So, yeah. so far, neighbors are giving me what they think is refuse. One man's trash is another man's treasure, right? And it's great. So, you saw the one rock pile there, the one rock pile over there. And then there's one and right I here. Have left here another rock pile but it's not going to stay here uh, I need a ca candidate location for this um, I was thinking somewhere in the backyard here or perhaps in the front where I have the uh, island of trees and stuff like that to make a little uh, habitat for animals that that would help you know it's not this is uh, what I figure about 30 cubic yards of wood chips, okay? So that's two loads by uh, one of them. I think both of them are the same. You, I've even seen a, your first video that had people delivering was... Uh, on this side of the mountains or when I on lived on the other? The okay. It was... Uh, I don't uh, even know. I have... Roger... Uh, Anyway, I saw your video, and the next day I called mm -hmm. that same tree company, and then like within a week, I had my first load, right? And the second load, so they were about 15 cubic yards each, thereabouts. So on this property, I have the 15 cubic yards of, or sorry, 30 cubic yards of wood chips, plus everything, everything that is generated on this property, I try not to have leave this property. Right? None of it is garbage in my opinion. Anything that's organic is fair game for me, right? Now, um, Bermuda grass is of the devil. <laughs> and uh, so when I pull Bermuda grass, it goes in the garbage. Some people might be tempted to make a tea or a compote or whatever out of that. That's a lot of effort that I don't want to go through. I already have enough Bermuda grass. I don't want to, to tempt the devil, <laughs> you know. So, um, so we've pretty much covered everything. Um, so the organic material generated on my property. We got that tree. We got some. Uh, we got uh, the Abravidi tree over there, right? Which is a tree from the family Abravidi, which doesn't decay as well, you know, in hugel culture beds and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Um, but, you know, the family of Abravidi is also this tree right here, right? Uh, cedar. Um, but I still, it's still organic material. It still can hold water. It still will decay eventually. So if it's mixed in with the other stuff, I'm not that very worried about it. Actually, it's a more long-lasting feature mm -hmm. of a hugel culture bed. Um, so you have the quick decaying stuff, like some of the deciduous trees, and then the conifer types, like the pines and stuff, and then the from the family Abravidae. So you kind of have a slow-release de decay going on in your hugel culture bed. People say, oh, I just put a bunch of deciduous trees in. Birch, I love birch. You know, it'd be great, it's great for it. But I think a diversity in your Google culture bed can promote a long, very long-term uh, benefit that you try to get from the Google culture bed, which is long-term water storage and a fungal-based um, soil food web, 
because wood decays through fungal means and not um, uh, bacterial means, right? And as soils evolve, it evolves from more um, bacterial-based when it's fertile to a more fungal-based, right? That's why uh, 70 uh, in the 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 forests. Paul always points to the forest in Western Washington and the whole forest down the road from them, right? That's a huge, ancient forest, right? 70% of the soil is, is organic material, right? Normal farms these days is about 1%, okay? And they used to be, when they first were tamed, 10, 12, 15%. So they were still... Uh, more bacterial based, bacterial dominated soils. And then as soils evolve, especially if there's water around, like the rain in western Washington, they become more fungally dominated. I'm sure it, this is technical stuff you may or may not want to put on your videos. But as you go from a higher and higher organic content, the percentage, you go from more from bacterial to fungal, right? So when you walk around the forests of western Washington, mushrooms are growing all over the place. They're actually uh, a, a single organism mushroom uh, uh, that is for acres in some places, right? What do you call those? Uh, mycelium, mm -hmm. uh, right? The, the mushrooms that you see out of the ground is the fruiting body, but it's a, a huge amount of mycelial growth, fungal growth, fungally dominated soil, right? So will this soil become fungally dominated? I don't know, because we're in, you know, seven to nine inches of rain per year, right? But that's the evolution of where a lot of soils come to. And that's the wood chip on top helps with that and it's great to have mycelial growth within your soil food web. It's a, a very important part whether it's you know 5% of your total or 50% it's a very important part mycelial growth. Mm -hmm. right? So I'm sure that people have told you that the scientific part now Paul brings the other parts in but wood chips are huge because they already bring in the mycelial stuff right the fungal domination right that so bringing that together with the bacterial and the microarthropods and all that other stuff is just it's it's candy it's good food for everything that lives underneath the ground that's I'm not sure that that's what people ever say in your videos is the advantage of bringing in something that's that's fungally dominated onto a soil where you're trying to create a healthy soil food web which is maintained by a good source of water good uh, good uh, what you call it good amount of air right you know it needs to be aerobic and good uh, a marrying of bacteria and, and all the other things. There needs to be food. There needs to be a live root in the ground all the time because they eat the exudates sugars mm -hmm. from the roots and then they give back to the plants whatever they give back. Water, uh, you know, nitrogen. Nitrogen, yeah. You can get it. It's mobile underneath there. All the stuff comes to deposit the fertilizers. It comes to it. You don't need to put it on. It comes to it all by itself, you know? And if it's a nice, healthy food web, it will sustain a garden for tens of thousands of years. Tens of thousands of years without a single drop of fertilizer, pesticide, or anything else like that.